Hey y'all, it's Nancy the Handy Scandy. Thanks for joining me again on the Whimsy Stamps channel. Today we are going to be making these two fall slash Thanksgiving cards, whatever purpose you might want them for. But we're going to focus on the down and dirty water coloring that I love to do. And we're going to embrace the white space and texture to make the images the focal point. So I start out by using the Gourds and Pumpkins clear stamp set. It was released last month. Now I have them stamped out on my Canson XL watercolor paper. You can use any watercolor paper, you can use any ink. You just want to make sure that the ink you use is either a watercolor friendly ink or that you dry it fully so that it doesn't smear or that maybe you even heat emboss with black or clear embossing powder. Now I started up by blotting up the color from my work surface from a previous project to create these lovely soft kind of mottled background and then the images were stamped on that. Now I also die cut them from the pierced and stitched circle die set as well as the antique ATC die sets and that's how I came up with kind of where we're starting at. Now in terms of the watercolor and you can see that I am mostly putting my pigment down on my work surface and then picking it up and transferring it to my image with that paintbrush or even smaller images. I started out by laying down just a wash of that orange color which was very very light and then I went back in with my pen direct to paper as you can see I'm doing there as well. Now I have this kind of rusty red and that's creating the depth, the dimension, the shadows but still you can see that I'm just laying down color. I'm not worrying about staying in, in the lines per se or feeling the spaces fully. Um, I'm just laying down color. Now, like I said, the rusty red along the pumpkin ridges adds the dimension in the shadows. And then here I come in with um, some greens and some browns for the stem and for the leaves and just kind of sticking with that autumnal color palette. Now, there are times when I just pick up the, the pigment from the work surface and then again, as you can see, there are other times when I come in direct to paper. Now yellow, if I put it on my work surface, it doesn't do a whole lot on this image because it, I started out with that mottled background already, so there's a lot of pigment down there. Now in that case, I even use the yellow to kind of blend out my other colors. And you know, fall leaves, they're, they're mottled already. They have different colors and different tones on each leaf, depending on the type of tree that it is. So I'm just using a variety of autumnal colors as I mentioned and here I'm using that darker green to create the shadow under the pumpkin and it kind of gives it a little bit more dimension and even a little bit of separation between the pumpkin and the bed of leaves. Now here you can see how flat the images actually start out when they're first stamped and in the colored image you can see how the, the painting process kind of created the natural highlights and the shadows and some character. And you really wouldn't get those, or I wouldn't get those, if I'd fussed over it. And again, that's me. That's my process. Maybe it's not for everyone. But on this second image, you can see I'm using more of the direct-to-paper with the pen versus the paintbrush. Now, every now and then I'll come in with the paintbrush and kind of blend out the colors or, you know, blend out maybe a harsh line or something like that but it's the same basic color palette as the first one. These are just a little bit deeper and maybe even a little bit richer because when you use the direct to paper you're putting down more concentrated color and it's it's just heavier, it's just more of it. So it's not really different per se, it's just deeper and richer as you can see on the screen. So if you are not one for splatter, you might want to close your eyes <laughs> or fast forward a little bit. And if you are one for splatter, you can stop at any point or you can continue on. Whatever pleases your eye, that's what matters. Whatever makes you happy in your artistic process. Now for me, I like a lot of splatter and with the watercolors, you know watercolor always dries back much softer. In fact, a lot of our, a lot of our um, mediums do, don't they? But I'm putting down a lot of splatter with the variety of the different colors, the autumnal colors that I used for painting my images, and they do dry back quite a bit. So here you can see up close and personal, <laughs> you can see the mottled background, you can see the splatters, and how they've softened up quite a bit. Yes, there's a lot of them, but they've softened up quite a bit. And you can see also the down and dirty watercolor the way that I paint it. Now I embrace the imperfections and I just let them become a part of the art. I really do. Now when we get to the final cards you will see all of that lovely white space and how it really allows the pumpkin images to be the focal point. 
Now for me, vast amounts of white kind of hurts my eyes. So I love the white and I want to embrace it, but I add texture because that still gives my eyes something to see versus just the white. I have used the diagonal dot slimline embossing folder. And the other one is using the thatched slimline embossing folder. Now to get that texture, that dimension, you can use whatever embossing folder you have that pleases your eye or makes sense to your project. You can use stencils for dry embossing, for ink embossing, like you could do white on white. You could heat emboss with maybe just some Versamark and some white or some clear ink. You can add die cuts to add some texture to the background. There are many ways that you can add white texture to a white background and still embrace the white space but maybe add a little bit of interest or something else for your eye to lay on versus just a vastness of white space which is beautiful but for my eye it's a little bit hard and then to finish off both cards i added a trim of some pattern paper from a whimsy pattern paper pack that i'll have downstairs as well as just some glitter stock that was from my stash and some beautiful copper embellishments from this calls for confetti but guys this was my process these are my cards my down and dirty watercolor kind of broken down and explained as well as how i like to use white space to allow my my focal images to be the focal point if you will so guys let me know what you think drop drop me a comment downstairs you know i love spending time with you so i would love to spend some time with you down in the comments but i'd also love to spend some time with you over on social media so you can meet us on pinterest on instagram on our facebook page we would love to spend some time with you there and of course i have everything linked and listed downstairs for your convenience and until next time guys thanks again and this is nancy the handy scandy I'm out.